Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company, taking a look at some of the guns that they are going to be selling in their upcoming February of 2018 regional auction. And today I have an unfortunate announcement I have to make. Not all things that glitter are gold. There are, in fact, fakes out there in the collector's market just waiting to dupe the unsuspecting buyer. And this is an example of one. Now, I should say up front, this is being sold by Rock Island as a fake example of what it purports to be. So there's no fraud going on here, and this is to me a perfect example of, uh, or a perfect opportunity to show you some of the things involved if you decide to get into serious Luger collecting. Because Luger collecting can be a kind of frightening field. There is an incredible amount of detail that Luger collectors and historians have dug into. And being able to identify and authenticate real from fake on some of these extremely technical little points can be pretty challenging. So um, what I'll start off with is just saying that the, the type of gun we're looking at here purports to be one of the early B-series GL script toggle pistols. So what does that mean? Uh, early around 1903-1904, there was a batch of, well, maybe into 1905, there was a batch of Luger pistols made in the 10,000 series serial numbers with a B suffix. So guns presumably from 10,000 B up to about, 10, well, the last documented one is 10,158 B. And the guns in this series kind of do all sorts of different things. Some of them were presentation guns, some of them were prototype guns. Uh, they were used, that serial number was used for some of the very first 9mm prototypes, some of the very early prototypes in development of the new model Luger. Um, they went from primarily from a flat spring to a coil spring. And so it's this interesting batch of guns that kind of, it's, it's a grab bag of all sorts of various interesting pistols in this one little serial number range. And amongst them, are a bunch of guns where the back of the toggle, right behind the sight, is marked with Georg Luger's initials in this fancy little script stamping. So these guns, of course, command a massive premium to really serious collectors, because they're all really substantial pieces of the history of the development of the Luger pistol. So that is what this purports to be. Let's take a closer look and see if we can figure out if it really is. Let's start with what we can see just from the outside of the gun. So right off the bat we're going to notice that it has this scalloped uh, toggle knob. Uh, that indicates that it is in fact an old model Luger, so a 1900 pattern Luger. Next up we can see that it has a DWM logo, that's normal. Nothing on the chamber, so that's a little bit of an indicator of something unusual going on, because normally there'd be a national crest or Next, we would typically go to the serial numbers, which are going to be located on the front of the frame and the bottom of the barrel, and this is where we see something interesting show up. Here, all of a sudden, oh, we have a B suffix, and this is a 10,000 series gun. Now, the actual numbering, that all looks fine. Um, that's something that is difficult to authenticate just by itself, because among this series of guns, the size of the digits and their exact placement around these areas, it really did actually vary, and you would not have the suffix on the barrel serial number. So that all looks good. Now at this point we can tell that this pistol is at least made to look like it is something special and important. So now we should start paying much closer attention. All right, and here's the big deal. There's that GL uh, initial script stamped on the back of the toggle. And uh, at this point this is like from the, the gun seller's point of view, this is the no going back spot. At this point you are really claiming that this gun is something seriously special with that stamping on it. So put up or shut up. Now we have to find out if it's real or not. Uh, before I move on I will point out uh, the DWM factory didn't do any of its own engraving. So marks like this were actually cut into dies and they were all stamped. Uh, if you find a gun like this, or purported to be like this, that is clearly hand engraved, it's fake. Uh, the authentic GL script stamps were in fact stamps. One of the best things to look for, in part because it's indicative and in part because it's on the outside of the guns, is, well are, two very specific areas. One is this curvature right here, 
and the other is this back little horn of the toggle. So on virtually all of the B suffix guns, this edge right there is not sharp like this one, but actually very heavily uh, rounded. So it's smoothed over right there, like someone took a, a buffing or a polishing wheel and broke off that edge to make it round. This one is not. This one is nice and square. So that's a problem. Next up, if we look at the end of the toggle right here, you can see that it comes out basically perpendicular to the back face of the receiver. That's another problem. One of the characteristics of these uh, B-series guns is that that hook tends to be uh, cut at an angle. So the hook co should come farther down, and it should be kind of undercut. In fact, the best way to show you this is to show you some pictures out of uh, Sturgis's book on the Luger. So it's this cut right here that we're looking for, this undercut at that back hook, as well as the rounded edge, which is a little more difficult to see uh, through the camera looking at the book. But if we look at the back hook there, you can see that is not undercut the way these are. All right, this isn't looking good, but there are some other things we can look at. Maybe we can salvage this. Maybe there's other evidence that suggests that this is a real script pistol. So pull the magazine. We're going to go ahead and disassemble this. Pull that back. Now normally you would have a two-digit serial number right where that script GL is. So on real ones, because they didn't put the serial number there, and by the way, they almost never put it just down below the script, only on like special presentation guns. On something like this, it should have the serial number on the right-hand bar of the toggle, right there. That is where they replaced the serial number if it was, well, displaced by the GL mark. And we don't have anything there, so that's also not good news. So this is starting to look bad for this pistol. In fact, it's starting to look pretty darn bad for this pistol. It's a gorgeous gun, um, it's in very nice shape, but eh, it doesn't look like it's actually what it's claiming to be. So there's one last thing we can do, and that is to look up what is known about other guns in this series that might be very close to this one in serial number. So this is 10,045. We actually know about three other documented pistols right nearby it. We know uh, about 10,041, 42, and 46. And all three of those guns share a couple of very specific features. So as one last check, we can see if this gun also shares those features, which are not standard features on a typical old model Luger. So if it does, then maybe we need to go back and reassess. Maybe we've missed something, or maybe this is a prototype with some other different features that we haven't noticed yet. Because guns in this series, typically, if they weren't presentation guns, they were prototypes with unusual changes. So in fact, actually, in this series you have things like uh, shorter grip, seven-shot, short-barreled baby Lugers. Anyway, uh, specific to these guns, these guns in the, the 10,040 range, they started to modify, they experimented with modifying, uh, starting with what was a long-frame gun, down to what would be the new short-frame model. So if you consider that the original Lugers were in 765 by 21 millimeter, 765 parabellum, uh, when they introduced 9 millimeter, that was 9 by 19. So the case actually got 2 millimeters shorter. And in order to maximize strength of the gun, they actually shortened the frames by 2 millimeters as well. I should have mentioned this is a 9 millimeter gun. So when they did that, they started with a couple experimental guns where they actually just took existing long frames and shortened them. And that's what you have with uh, the 10,040 series guns. It's that, that is distinctive about them. Unfortunately, this has the profile of a standard uh, long frame Luger. Now you may be wondering, long and short, that ought to be pretty obvious, and why haven't I heard about that? Well, the answer is, it's really not obvious. This is a really good example of just how detailed Luger collecting and Luger authenticating gets. They shortened the frame by two millimeters. So the shape of this is very subtly different. It comes in about that far, and then it curves more sharply right here at the takedown lever, and comes across kind of parallel to the bottom of the takedown lever. So this curve right here at the base of the trigger guard gets pushed up that direction. 
in fact, once again, I think it will work best to show you some pictures, again, from Sturgis's uh, book on the Borchardt and Luger. So this is the old model, and that is the new model on the bottom. So what we would expect, in fact, there's 10046B. You can see that it's got this old model style of profile right here at the trigger guard, but the distance from the takedown lever to the front of the frame is definitely shorter, and the frame straightens up vertically a little more quickly. So when we look at our gun, you can see it clearly matches this profile, which is the standard old model, where a gun immediately adjacent to 10046, remember this claims to be 10045, it should have that same modification, considering that 41 and 42 also have it. So there you have it. This is definitely not a uh, legitimate Georg Luger uh, script toggle pistol. So I do want to point out that I am not normally this intimately familiar with details of the Luger on this level, uh, before you guys start sending me a whole bunch of really, really detailed questions about Lugers. Uh, I did quite a bit of reading and note-taking to prep for this particular video, to make sure that I understood all the ins and outs of this specific gun. So that's the sort of thing that you really need to do if you get into Luger collecting on this scale. Well, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something today. Hopefully I didn't necessarily dissuade you from getting into Lugers. That's certainly not my goal. My goal is to say, if you do get interested in collecting Lugers, do yourself a favor, spend some money on books first, and go into that field fully informed, or as close to fully informed as you can be. Um, if you're really serious about it, I would recommend starting with uh, Jeffrey Sturgis' massive three-volume set on uh, the Borchardt and Luger automatic pistols. There is a version that was published by Collector Grade, and also a version published by Simpson. Um, I have a review up on those books. So if you're interested, look into that series. It is not a cheap book, but it is way cheaper than spending big money on something like this, only to discover that it's well, not quite exactly what you thought it was. So, anyway, if you do want this one, because there is always a market for well-done copies, well-done fakes, uh, when they are known to be fakes. It's still a gorgeous pistol, and for most people this sort of thing is as close as they will ever get to having an authentic GL script Luger. So if you do, uh, if you would like to have it, take a look at the description text below. There's a link there to Rock Island's catalog page on this guy. That has their price estimates, their pictures, their description, their disclaimer about it not being authentic, uh, and all that sort of good stuff. And if you're interested, you can participate in their auction right through the website. Thanks for watching.